umaga sa inyong lahat. This is Teacher Gerald Ramayo. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you kung paano ko bang ginagawa yung mga lecture videos na ginagamit ko in teaching my students. Just a disclaimer, I've been teaching online classes for three months now and whatever am I sharing with you guys are some of the things that I was able to figure out while I'm in the process of adjustments since most of us, including me, are not really used in teaching classes online. Number one, in filming my videos, I'm basically using my laptop's built-in camera. For me, are very practical and efficient. Just in case you don't want to feel the hassle of transferring files, converting files, your memory getting full, and some complications like that. So I think using a direct camera will be a great help. But just in case you have a different preference, it's totally fine to use a high-definition camera or your phone, and I think that would be great. Next, for my microphone, sometimes I use my laptop's built-in microphone, but most of the time, I'm basically using my earphone's microphone, which I think gives me a better quality. And lastly, in recording your lectures, I personally recommend you to have the application called Screencastify. So Screencastify is available in your web store. So you type Screencastify, then you download it and add it to your extensions. Then once you have now the Screencastify in your Google Chrome, you can find a pink arrow in the upper right corner of your tab. Then when you click it, this will give you tons of options of how do you want to record your videos. If you just want to record your tab, your whole desktop, or if you just want to record using your webcam. There will be options also of what mic to use or camera to use. And lastly, since my account is not yet upgraded, I always have 5 minutes limit in recording using Screencastify. But don't worry because you can always restart recording every after 5 minutes just in case you will need more time to record some of your lectures. So this is how do I actually use Screencastify in recording my films. First, I have here my Google slide which I will be using as my PowerPoint presentation. Sometimes, I intentionally use Google slides in presenting my lectures when using Screencastify because this is more practical than Microsoft PowerPoint since, since Google slide is already presented in the Google Chrome tab. So so here, I'm gonna set my PowerPoint into presentation mode. Then I'm gonna click the exit full screen. So I can actually see the tab header and click the Screencastify button. So here, I'm choosing the browser tab option where my PowerPoint is located and make sure that the microphone and webcam is activated before I press record. So this is how it looks like when I present using the Screencastify. I can actually resize my video size just in case it is bothering my presentation. Then once you're done presenting, you just have to click the pink button again in the upper right corner of your tab. Then here you can see the remaining time of your 5 minutes limit. And here you can see different options like delete, retake, pause, or stop your video. Then when you stop the video, this will lead you to the Screencastify page and give you the option of saving it to your Google Drive or, or download it so you can still have the choice to edit or enhance your lecture video. So I always prefer to export this as MP4. Then you click to convert to fixed frame rate. Then you wait while Screencastify is exporting your MP4 file. So once done downloading the file, you may check your download folder and, and see if you're now ready to proceed in editing your video. Now, after filming, we usually want to do adjustments in our video since sometimes we want to trim out something in the video that we think is not necessary. Maybe there are unnecessary noises and all the other adjustments that we think we need to do to make it more presentable. So in editing my lectures, I have iMovie, but again, just in case you have a better software or editing application, you can always use it because whatever we prefer using, 
whatever camera, whatever microphone, or whatever software is best for us. At the end of the day, the most important thing that we need in filming our lecture is the output. So here, I'm gonna import the video I have in my download folder. Then you can drag it down to the pane. And as you can see in the preview, the video size don't actually match to the iMovie preset size. So what I'm gonna do is click this uh, crop button. Then there will be options like fit, crop to fill, or Ken Burns. And I'm gonna be choosing fit so nothing in my raw video will be cropped out. Then you just go back to your video. And what you're gonna do is expand your file. So this is ready for trimming, cutting, and other editing that you are planning to do with your lecture. So in my simple editing, I always do three basic things to enhance my lecture videos. Number one is trimming or cutting out. So I always cut out or trim out everything that is not necessary in my lecture video. So just in case I buckle or there are unnecessary noises, I can always trim something out of the video. So for example, I buckle in this part. So what I'm gonna do is split clip. So in trimming, you just have to select the starting point of something that you want to take out from the video. So, so for example, I'm gonna select the 32 second part. Then what I'm gonna do, if you have the Mac, you can use the command B to split the video. Then find out where is the end point of your trimming. So for example, I'm gonna be choosing the 35 seconds as the end point. So, so I'm gonna be trimming out something from 32 seconds to 35 seconds. So here I'm gonna control B. So this 32 to 35 clip, I'm gonna delete it. Then that's how you trim something out of your video. Number two, I always prefer to put background music in my videos because for me, I think it is more interesting to listen in a lecture or discussion when some music is playing in the background. So here I have a pre-downloaded music which I can use for this video. So one tip for me, I always choose happy and upbeat music whatever am I discussing because I think that because I believe that this music can uplift students while they are trying to learn something from your video. So here I'm gonna drag down the music at the bottom of the video. So another tip. Once my music was now already added to my video, I always make sure that the volume of my lectures and the volume of the music won't overlap. So what I do is, I'm gonna select a part where I should tone down the volume so the students will hear what I'm trying to say in my lecture. So for example, okay, so I started speaking in 0 02 seconds. So here, I'm gonna select the music, then I'm gonna use Command B to trim the music. So from here, I'm gonna point my arrow to the volume adjuster. You can see the adjust volume options. Then here, you can drag it down to adjust the volume. And I always choose 7%. So you can see that in my intro, since I am not speaking in my lecture, I can actually use the original volume. Then I adjusted the volume at that point where I started speaking so student can focus on what to listen. So this is the output. So this is how it looks like when I present with my camera. Okay. And lastly, number three, there will be times I'm putting introductions or outro or in-between labels in the video, which I think is necessary every time my students are watching longer videos, which they might find confusing. So in adding labels, I always go to the background and choose a plain background, drag it down to your video, so for example, I'm going to be doing an introduction. So here, when I have a blank space already, I'm going to go to titles. 
So here, I have tons of options of how I want my text to be presented in the video. For example, I'm gonna be choosing expand. So here, I'm gonna drag it down to the blank space. Then I will make sure that the length of the presentation of the text is parallel to the blank space. So it won't overlap to the next video. So here, I'm gonna double click. Then double click here. Then type introduction. You may change the color. And enter. So here what it looks like. So this is how it looks like. Okay. Then again, you can also do it in between. For example, you want to put labels in between of different lectures or different topics. For example, I'm going to be choosing 14 seconds. So command B to split. Then go back to background and drag down in between of the video then here go back to titles then drag then choose expand then drag it down to the blank space then there you go double click then labels Change color, then enter. Then there you go. And for sure, you can do it also outro or at the end of the video. Then once you're done editing your video, enhancing your video by trimming, putting background music, or putting labels, you can preview your video here. And if you think it's ready, you just have to export the video. So you have the export button here at the upper right corner of your tab. Then you can change the file name. For example, lecture number one. Then save as lecture one. Then you can choose wherever you want to save it. You can save it in your desktop or somewhere. And at last, you can wait until the video is ready to preview and ready to publish. And that's it! Your video is now ready to publish. So in my preference, I use YouTube as my platform in publishing my lectures because compared to other choices, I think it is more accessible to students. At the same time, I can actually share my lectures or materials to other students and teachers that might need it. And if you guys think that this video helped you to prepare for your next presentations or classes, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you guys have better idea or suggestions, an easier or better way to prepare a lecture video, please comment down below or send us your video. I'd be very happy to learn from you. Thank you so much for watching this video everyone. I hope you guys are feeling great today. Please wear your mask, sanitize, social distancing, and stay safe. I hope to see you guys in my next video.